and Pelvic Healers. It's Julie Sarton and Jojo. And we're coming to you from Sarton Physical Therapy, known as Pelvic Healing. So uh, about four to five weeks ago, we did a post on why you don't want to push your pee out. And we wanted to follow up with that today because we got a lot of interest and a lot of questions as to why that's not good and then what are better techniques to use. So Julie, why is it that we should not be pushing our pee out? Okay, great question. Let's cover this first and then we'll go into some good techniques on how to improve it. So here we have a bladder coming through here. This happens to be a male bladder. There is a prostate here and here is the urethra, the tube we pee out of. What I quickly want to just show is that the relationship of the pelvic floor, which my hand right now would be acting as the pelvic floor musculature, comes right around the bladder neck and surrounds the urethra. So First of all, if we activate or if we push our pee out, we activate these muscles to contract. And truly, when we urinate, the muscles need to relax. They need to expand, offering or allowing for a pressure change to occur around the urethra and allowing the bladder neck to drop down so we can empty our bladder completely. So number one, that is a critical piece. And if we activate those muscles inappropriately when the brain knows that the muscles should actually quiet down and lengthen we can get a stop start flow pattern that develops over time so it can backfire number two why you don't want to push your pee out you want to prevent abnormal intra-abdominal pressure coming down to create a prolapse and doing this once or twice is not going to put you at risk for prolapse but doing this thousands of times over the years can certainly put you at risk for uh, pelvic organ prolapse. We don't want that bladder dropping down. That's so interesting. So can you offer us some techniques like how to, you know, properly void, sit on the toilet, pee, that kind of thing? Yes, let's equip you with some really basic tools and techniques we can use quickly. So number one, we always want to think about breathing and breath work and the relationship of what happens with our diaphragm right up through here in our pelvic floor. So Jojo, since you are such an expert breather as a yoga instructor, why don't you take us through a quick diaphragmatic breath and knowing if you incorporate breath work as you're sitting on the toilet, this will calm the nervous system and particularly shift you over into the parasympathetic state versus the sympathetic state. So really what we want to focus on is not so much breathing up here in the chest or in the neck musculature, but what we really want to focus on is the belly and the rib cage, expanding on inhale and then just allowing the exhales to be passive. Perfect. So a lot of us, because life is busy, we're always in a rush, you know, and, and we won't want to go fast with everything that we're doing, <clears throat> excuse me. So you want to think about slowing down for a minute and getting a few deep breaths going to allow a shift into your parasympathetic state, allow the pressure exchange to happen as the diaphragm descends, the pelvic floor descends, that opens and relaxes the pelvic floor to allow for a better urination. Thank you. It's perfect. So breathing, number one. Number two, positioning is really important when you sit on the toilet. So here in the West, we think we're so civilized and advanced with our toilets, but actually they work against us. So a key component to understand or concept to understand is that when we urinate or even defecate, our knees should actually be higher than our hips. <laughs> We're gonna show you almost in real time the best way to urinate if you have a squatty potty. All right, this technique allows for your knees to be higher than your hips. And mechanically, what this does is it opens up the pelvic floor. We're mimicking a true squat position if we were to go all the way down. And this lengthens out the pelvic floor beautifully, allowing for, again, that pressure change around the urethra to open that up, allowing the bladder neck to drop down. So you can integrate what we talked about previously with doing a nice deep diaphragmatic breath. Good not pushing your urine out and allowing it to naturally drop, pelvic floor relaxes. A third technique that you can use to eliminate naturally without pushing your pee out is something we call the double void. So you actually will sit down on the toilet, attempt to urinate, and you may get a good portion out, but if you feel like you haven't fully urinated, you can then go ahead, stand up, good, and then sit back down again Okay, a 
allowing the pelvic floor to release and wait for just a minute and see if you get more urine out. Okay, so another technique, a fourth technique that you can use for adequate voiding to prevent you from pushing your pee out is a manual cue. And let's just orient you with the anatomy really quickly. Here's a pelvis and the bladder, think of it as a flat pancake that sits right behind the pubic bone. When it is full, think of it as a balloon that comes up slightly above the pubic bones right through here. So look at where Jojo is um, pointing with her fingers. You can come right into what's called the super pubic region and gently cue the bladder. It's time to empty. And it's not a hard push, it's a very gentle, soft push. Okay, and that can stimulate to get the process going. So our fifth and our final little tip of the day is a little Sartan secret that we have learned here from dear Julie. So Julie, teach us. So we call this sacral stimulation. So knowing the anatomy, the main nerve that innervates or the only nerve that innervates the bladder is called the pedendal nerve. That comes down through the spinal cord and exits into the pelvis through, it's called S234, right through here. So this, the nerve roots lie right in through here. And if you gently take your fingers and stimulate the skin right over the sacral foramen, the holes right in through here, you will activate that nerve. You wake it up. And that nerve then triggers the bladder to contract. Oh, it's time to contract. And this is a technique that we used to use in the neuro rehab world. And I was a neurotherapist before a pelvic floor therapist. And so just a very light, gentle tickle right through here. Again, will stimulate that nerve to wake it up so that it can initiate, help you initiate urination without you having to bear down and push, which we never want to do. Thank you. You're welcome. So we hope that you got a lot out of this today. Um, again, so many questions that we get about how do we stop straining and how do we stop pushing out our pee. Um, so hopefully today we offered some really easy, simple techniques that are super effective. Yes, try these at home. And if these do not work alone, seek out the help of a pelvic floor physical therapist because there's so much more that we can offer and you really need a, an internal evaluation to see what your pelvic floor musculature is doing and how to learn to coordinate all of this. Thank you so much, Julie. All right, happy pee. Bye. Bye.